Hello again and welcome back to my shop. I'd like to do another follow-up video on my most recent video, the DNA pen. Now the first question I got I thought was a really good question. Uh, is there a reason you brought the lines in in a radii instead of parallel lines? And the answer is yes, there's a very good reason for that. Uh, if you look at the double helix for the uh, DNA strand, the lines appear to be slammed a little bit to kind of simulate the twist. Uh, so the idea was by bringing the lines into a radii like that, when you look at it, it would kind of curve them a little bit to make it look like the DNA strand was twisting around the pin. Next, I'd like to talk about a comment that I got. Maybe if the lines were closer to the center of the blank and not near the X point, it will prevent blowouts. That's a very good observation, but I don't think the, the piece being tiny is what caused the blowout. In my opinion, there were two things that caused the blowout. Number one, when the piece was missing, I could look at the wood and I could not see any dry glue on it. So even though I was drooling glue down inside of my blank, I don't think I got enough glue in there or maybe just some of the edges had glue on it, but it wasn't enough to really hold the piece tightly in place. Number two, um, I think I have a tendency to use my roughing gouge to turn my pins. I think had I been using a skew and moving across the top, I would have had better luck. However, if the glue was the problem, I don't think there's really anything I could have done that would have stopped this issue. A couple of points to be made, and, and this has been commented several times on this video and some of my other aluminum can videos. Um, I don't usually rough up the aluminum cans. Uh, that's going to change as I use this technique in the future to make other pens, and I do have a lot of ideas for how to use this technique, uh, I'm going to start roughing them up uh, to give better adhesion. And the second thing is I'm going to continue to use more and more glue in an effort to make sure I've got uh, the best possible coverage. I'd like to talk about another comment that I got that really got, got the wheels turning up here. Um, if the flaws bother you, change the blank to two fish swimming head to tail. Now, as soon as I read that, my mind started racing because I'm thinking, you know what? This guy's got a good idea. As I make that last outside cut on one side of the blank, it wouldn't matter which side, I could cut that piece off and basically glue a piece of walnut to the blank. Then get my surrogate blank, make my X cuts, and what I'm gonna have is, it'll kinda look like the DNA strand with four uh, cherry segments, but then there'll be a little walnut segment on the other end, which could sort of be construed as the tail of a fish. Um, it, it just, it really gets you thinking when people make comments like this. That's one of the reasons why I love showing my work and I love having people comment to me because it, it just gives me so many ideas. It really gets the creative juices flowing. So I, I love that comment and we're going to see some repercussions from that in the future, I think, because I've got some ideas. Another comment I got was, you need to figure out how to do the design for the full length of the blank. And this is another one that really got me thinking. Um, instead of the pin turning and the design being around the pin, the design would go all the way down the pin. I got to thinking, what would be cool is if I kind of used the surrogate blank and as I cut the pieces out, I just rotated them 90 degrees and glued them together to form a blank. So in other words, I would get this top section and then I would just cut it off, flip it 90 degrees, make another one, and continue to glue those together. I think I could pull that off going down, down the face of the pin. And uh, I think at some point I'm going to give that a try because that idea really intrigued me. Someone else left a comment that said, for a very clever twist, you should try a six-sided Celtic knot. I am all about that. I would love to try a six-sided Celtic knot. Uh, I'm going to have to get out on Google and do a little looking around and see if I can't find a photo of what one looks like. Uh, but I think that's a cool idea. I had no idea that such a thing existed. Uh, I'm not surprised. There's a lot of things I don't know about. But if any of you happen to have a photo of a six-sided Celtic knot or have made a six-sided Celtic knot pen, I'd love to see what you've made because... Uh, I'd like to try that and I'd like to put a how-to video together uh, to teach that to anyone who might want to learn it. I got a good question on CA glue. I was asked, how does CA hold up over time for both structure and finish? I've got some pins that are probably five years old that are, that are out there with friends and family 
And finish wise, they look darn near as good as they did the day that I gave them to them. So as a finish, CA glue holds up phenomenally well. Now, I get asked the question all the time about structure, and I've said this before, I'll say it again. In my videos, I use CA because it's quick. I can put it on, I can hit it with some accelerator, and I can be turning in a couple of minutes. If I'm gonna make a pin for someone, uh, and, and I wanna give them that pin as a gift, I definitely want it to last. And I've heard so much debate over CA is not a long-term solution. I generally go with epoxy. I think epoxy is, is generally viewed as a long-term solution. Uh, it, it holds well, it turns well, and uh, I should probably use it in my videos, but the problem is if I do, I'm gonna have to wait overnight to turn, and I really like to just build and turn and go. So that's kind of my two cents on that question. Great question though. I got a comment from a fella who said, he clamps a piece of wood on his scroll saw to act as a guide to keep the cuts straight. Now, that is so darn simple that you just want to just, you know, smack yourself in the head for not thinking of it. That is an absolutely fantastic idea. And the next time I do a pin blank on my scroll saw, I plan to incorporate this idea because it's just so darn simple that it's, it's brilliant. So I love that comment. And, and finally, I got one last thing here. Um, how do you change the refills in a modified Sunline pin? This being a modified Sunline pin, you simply grab the end and kind of twist a little bit and pull it right out. Your nib and your transmission are pressed into either end of the tube, and then you can just essentially remove your refill, put it back into the pin, and then you can slide your pin back together. You eject the ink by turning the nib and retract the ink by turning the nib. And the transmission holds the pin together, which is exactly what holds the pin together if you were to have a, a decorative ring in the center and have a top and a bottom. It's still the transmission that holds things together. So it works very well. Before I say goodbye, I've got one last thing to do. Um, there's a fellow woodworker. His name is Lynn Lacey. Uh, LL Woodworks is his channel. I'm going to leave a, a link in the description below. Now, Lynn, he's only got about eight videos out there, eight or nine videos but his videos are extremely well planned, well thought out. He gives tons and tons of tips and techniques in the video. And I think if you watch his videos, you're gonna agree that Lynn is a great asset to the YouTube woodworking community. I wanna throw a thank you Lynn's way. Um, a while back, I, I sent Lynn a couple pieces of wood and uh, as a thank you for that wood, he made me a pencil. This is a shop pencil and check it out. It's absolutely gorgeous. He took a piece of sassafras that I gave him and he segmented it with some aluminum and he's put a little piece of acrylic on the top and did the same thing on the bottom. And the pen is, or I'm sorry, the shop pencil is absolutely gorgeous. I did not have a shop pencil. I have looked at these time and time again in the catalog and thought about buying them and I just haven't done it. I don't often make for myself. And when he gave me this, it's almost too beautiful to use, but uh, I guarantee you, I will use it. Um, I hate to say this, but Lynn, you'll see this pen in a year and it'll be beat up, but that just means I love it and I use it all the time. So thank you so much, Lynn. And with that being said, I would like to say to you, thank you so much for following along with my videos. Thank you so much for making my channel what it is. Keep these comments coming. My, the ideas I get from the things you guys say and from the questions you ask, you can't imagine how many ideas I get. So I'm hoping there are gonna be some more cool videos coming your way. But I want you guys to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Good night, everybody.